First, a super cool philosophical hot take that is sure to blow your brain. Words mean things, except when they don't. Specifically, language is an important tool in the Smash community, especially considering how much knowledge is transferred through guides and videos and in-person advice. There have been many moments in my Smash career that I've just read a sentence that fundamentally changed the way I looked at the game. But sometimes language is broad and unspecific and leaves me with more questions than answers. One particularly egregious example is the word optimal. People will say certain methods of tech chasing are optimal, or ledge options are optimal, or even ways of holding your controller are optimal. But this always begs the question, what are you optimizing for? Are you trying to cover as many options as possible? Or are you optimizing for max damage, if you have a read on how your opponent is DIing and teching? Or are you optimizing for consistency and tournament execution, removing as many unnecessary tight inputs as possible? Maybe you're optimizing for the speed of finishing up your O2 tournament run so that you can go hang out with your friends who've been waiting in the back for you to finish pools for two hours so that you can finally go to this bar that does this cool crap here. Today, I want to focus on two words of fighting game lingo that threw me for a loop as a new player. The words safe and unsafe. If you're new to fighting games, here's a quick primer on what these two terms colloquially mean. A move is comprised of three phases, the startup, the active frames, and the recovery. Here you can see the frame data of the Falcon Punch, which as you can imagine, has an absurdly long recovery time. The word safe here then refers to a simple rule of thumb. If you throw out a move and your opponent isn't able to land a hit on you before you're done recovering, you're safe. But if they are able to get to you before then, then the move you throw out is unsafe. And this rule was pretty effective for me when I was a new player, because it helped teach me not to do things like spam smash attacks on neutral, because they have an insanely long recovery time. I obviously should have been spamming up tilt instead. By this definition, there are a lot of moves that can be made safe and neutral. By learning to auto-cancel moves, and drift backwards when doing them, and also move as soon as we're actionable, we can stay incredibly safe, and make it so our opponents can't get a guaranteed punish without a hard read. But after a good amount of play, simply seeing moves as either safe or unsafe is really lacking in nuance, because if your move is safe, it sounds like it's free, that you should do it every time, that it's completely unexploitable by your opponent, and that there's no downside to doing it. To illustrate what I mean with an extreme example, a Falcon Punch all the way across Final Destination, for no reason or tangible benefit, while your opponent gets a full second to do whatever they want, is therefore safe. This model feels off. It wasn't until I read this cool blog post written by one of the biggest brains in Melee, Drug Fox, that I started to realize that just seeing things in the lens of safe and unsafe was holding me back as a player. The post titled Frame Advantage in Neutral, which applies a concept that's usually applied to very specific micro situations, like attacking a shield, as a framework for thinking about all of Melee. It's an awesome read, and I'll link it in the description. I think the concept of frame advantage is best illustrated with a quick example. Let's pretend that we're playing an oversimplified version of Melee, where both of us are playing Donkey Kong and our characters will spawn right next to each other. The game is really simple, with only three buttons, attack, shield, and grab. Attack is Donkey Kong's jab, which has a startup of four frames, and then is active on frame five. Shield comes out instantly, and if you shield and attack, you can grab them while they're recovering. You can also grab, which comes out frame 8, but goes through shield. So let's quickly run through all the possibilities. If both players attack, the moves will clank and nothing will happen. If both shield, the situation resets. If both grab, the grabs will cancel also. For this example, we're going to ignore all of you, well actually, port priority nerds. Simmer down over there. It gets more interesting when both players pick different options. Attack hits before grab, and therefore beats it. Grab goes through shield, and shield blocks attack. This creates a nice little rock, paper, scissors for us to play with. And there's not really anything to call home about here. Optimal strategy is to just mix up between all three options and just be random. This is not that interesting. However, what if we mess with the rules of the game a little bit? What happens if your moves start on frame zero, but my moves start on frame one? The main difference here is that if we both choose to attack, your attack will actually beat mine. And the same happens if you grab and I grab. But otherwise, everything still stays the same. My shield beats your attack, my grab beats your shield, my attack beats your grab. But this sort of weights everything a little differently. Here, we're looking at a mapping of all potential inputs from both players. You can see how my attack and grab now lose two thirds of the time, because they not only lose to their natural counters, but also to us pressing the same button at the same time. Only my shield remains the same. And on your end, your attack and grab both become a lot more powerful than before. What are the implications here? By you having a free frame to act before me, you gain a teensy edge. You aren't guaranteed to win the interaction, of course. There's chances where I can sneak in the hit if I manage to guess right, but you can see the odds are stacked against me. This free frame that you have to act before me can also be described as you being at plus one frame advantage. And this is just what happens at plus one. But at plus four, your grab becomes even faster than my attack and suddenly beats all my options. And at plus five frame advantage, 
Your attack literally just hits me. I can't do anything. Because I can't even get my shield out before your hitbox starts. And sure, in this simple version of melee, adding more frame advantage on top of this is pretty meaningless. But in the actual game, where you have all sorts of moves, this concept turns neutral into a spectrum of potential advantage states. As a general rule in melee, at low amounts of frame advantage, all of your options become a tad more safe, and mine slightly more invalid. And the scales are tipped in your favor if you decide to force a hit. But once we start getting into absurd amounts of frame advantage, I might as well take my hands off the controller. If frame advantage is so cool to have, how do you get frame advantage in neutral? Easy, have your opponent with a safe attack. And this is when everything starts coming together. Let's say you're playing a Marth Ditto, and enemy Marth runs up to you and throws out a down tilt that doesn't land. Marth can start acting again out of down tilt starting frame 20. And so if we assume your reaction time is a neat 250 milliseconds, which in melee would be 15 frames, we can say that the moment you notice what Marth's done, they're going to be unactionable for 5 more frames. Using the terminology we just covered, they're at a frame disadvantage of minus 5. By our previous definition of the word safe, which again means that we can land a guaranteed hit before the Marth can act again, this move is by all means safe. None of our moves will reach in time. But now armed with this new concept of frame advantage, we can have a more nuanced understanding of how this interaction might play out. Let's pretend neither you nor your opponent plan on backing down from this confrontation and are going to contest this space. Your opponent plans to do another down tilt as soon as they can, and you decide the forward smash. Your forward smash comes out frame 10, but their down tilt comes out frame 7. Down tilt is faster and should win, right? Well, no. Not if your opponent's operating with a 5 frame disadvantage. 7 becomes 12, and your forward smash will actually beat their down tilt. So sure, Marth whiffing a down tilt in neutral is safe. But they've paid for throwing out a free safe move in frames, and now has to respect that. Although Marth isn't instantly punishable, you get a nice head start going into the next iteration of Rock Paper Scissors. And it is still a Rock Paper Scissors. Forward Smash might beat enemy Marth if they decide to double down with an attack, but it'll do pretty poorly if our opponent decides to shield, which comes out instantly. Let me be clear, there isn't a single player on the planet who plays a game calculating exact frame advantage and disadvantage state in their head as they go. And if you meet someone who does, you should ask them to fill this out. But you don't need to know exactly what frame disadvantage you're at to know that you might need to play a little more safe until the situation's less favorable for your opponent. The next time you watch a pro set, pay attention to what players do after they miss a move. They very often go for options like shield or dash, which both start instantly instead of trying to double down with a laggy attack. And with a rough understanding of how powerful frame advantage can be, you can also push interactions on players who are recovering from options like whiffing an attack or tech rolling. Because even if your attack isn't guaranteed to land, you do have an edge you can abuse. The reason why I picked Marth for the prior example is because I think Marth is an amazing case study for understanding frame advantage, simply because his entire game design revolves around a motif of moves having way more downtime than they do uptime, and so every misswing hurts. There's an old Reddit post by the legend PPMD that says, Marth cannot just swing. In fact, I often tell Marth players less is more to help them learn to work with his lag and abuse ranged threats over actually attacking, since attacking is often very risky for him. And honestly, when I was a newer player, this made no sense to me. But now I get it, and frame disadvantage is a big reason why. Melee is a game that rewards precision. Attack too little, and you let your opponent move however they want with no fear. But attack too much, and you put yourself at frame disadvantage, and cede control over future game state to your opponent. In that example earlier, where Captain Falcon decides to Falcon Punch cross stage, less is more helps there too. It's not bad because Falcon's gonna get directly punished for it, but attacking has an opportunity cost, measurable in frames, that could have been spent in more meaningful ways. High level players don't just focus on mashing inputs to efficiently put out as many hitboxes as possible, but on being thoughtful and intentional with every button they do press. But of course, if you run into a player on netplay who doesn't know enough to beat you just running up to them and down tilting a bunch, just go nuts. To wrap up, here's a dinky little fun fact. The move with the worst frame advantage when completely with the neutral is Jigglypuff's Rest, which puts you at minus 249 which is why your opponent can even die, respawn, and still be able to kill you. Thanks for watching. This was a gnarly beast to edit, and so I hope it was worth it. But uh, I'm glad you made it to the end. Uh, I'm gonna try to post one time a week, see how that goes, even though the script writing and the editing uh, takes quite a while. But uh, one of the goals of this channel is actually to make content that I wish existed when I was a new player. And so if you have ideas on video essays you'd like to see, whether it be on, I don't know, mentality or practice or player breakdowns, that sort of thing, uh, feel free to drop comments down below and I will do my best. Peace out.